Hey everybody, it's Angela and I am back with another altered book binder. And this one uses a smaller ring and it is an old book. It's an, like 1901. I left the few front pages in and the last few pages and then put my binder mechanism in the middle. And the only thing different with this is I could not fit the posts down between these two spines. I did put the cardboard reinforcers in there, but I put the posts right through the back of the book um, because they wouldn't fit between the two um, spine pieces there. So that's the only difference. And I went ahead and I sprayed it with some blue Lindy Stamp Gang and Tattered Angels inks just to, you know, grunge it up a little bit. And I pulled out some metal pieces I was thinking to use as decorations. I especially loved that locket that had a little bit of the blue and pink in the picture on the locket, but I don't wind up using these pieces. They just seemed a little dark. Once I got the flowers on there, uh, the whole kind of theme of the front just lightened up and I didn't want to use these more um, antique gold colors on there. So. The difference in this binder from like the last cookbook binder I did was the cookbook binder used a lot of the Elizabeth Crafts Planner Essentials dies and those are a larger size die that fit more of an A5 size binding mechanism. But for these small books, they're too large. You need something smaller. Now Elizabeth Crafts does make uh, a sidekick planner die set that is smaller and so I looked that up and it actually turned out to be an A6 size and the only thing you have to remember when ordering binder rings is you get the um, six ring binder like replacement kit online is what I looked up and I looked up the A6 size and between one ring to the next you want 19 millimeters and then between the two sets of three rings you want 50 millimeters and then that will work with all of the sidekick um, dies from Elizabeth Crafts and then you have to choose you know depending on your book uh, you know what size ring how large of a ring do you want and so it kind of depends on each book so you'll have to do a little bit of research when you're ordering the rings if you want to do this style and you know find out what's going to work for you but I really love working with these binder rings and turning old books into binders it just makes them so much more usable and enjoyable and I'm I still sew in signatures as well. I like both things. I'm just kind of into this right now so I'm just running with what I'm inspired with. So for this you saw that I sprayed a couple of the doilies. I had some old doily fragments and I used a little bit of the blue that I sprayed on the front cover to put a little bit of color on those doilies. And then I didn't have any blue flowers in my stash, so I used that same ink to also uh, spray a few of my white flowers to turn them blue. And I'm going with some other pink and white flowers and then various shades of blue. And that's going to match in with the paper line that I wind up using on this. And I'll show that here in just a little bit. But the graphics on the front of this book weren't as inspiring as some of my other books I really love the old graphics that they have on there so I make sure that those show but in this case it was a little bit um, boring so I decided to go ahead and put my flower clusters where those images were since um, that enabled me to leave the title showing and I wanted to show that it was a story of love um, it says a story of love behind a throne and so I wanted to leave the title showing. And then I have a couple butterflies that I do wind up putting on here and they're just fussy cut out of the paper line that I use. So I'm putting that down and it does cover up quite a bit of the little doily pieces but they still poke out here and there. So I'm going ahead putting down some of these pinks and blues and just making sure that the colors 
are distributed evenly throughout. And I really, you know, just wanted to play with the flowers, do something. I mean, this is not super shabby chic or anything like that, I guess. Um, but it is very floral. And I just wanted to, you know, play with my flowers and doilies and sprays and stuff like that for this book. Since it was kind of a love story. And then I do wind up putting some flowers here on the spine. You just have to make sure that the book can still open and close, that you don't get them too close to the crease. Sometimes I'll put a charm on the spine or just some metal pieces, but in this case I just wanted to play with my flowers. I also took a little bit of the Stickles glitter glue and put it on the flowers just to give them a little bit of sparkle. And I'm not going to put a ton, I'm just going to put them up here at the top so that they're kind of almost like these on the front are kind of dripping over the side. And then I was, like I said, I was going to put that locket on there, but it just got was too dark for how bright this cover is turning out. So I've just pulled out some cream colored seam binding and I'm going to put a bow on here and I think that looks really pretty really soft and romantic and I think about tacking these tails of the ribbon down you know I think oh I could put them in a pretty shape and then glue them down but you know what I just really wanted to let them hang free I was afraid the glue would make it look it would soak through or something like that and then here's another of the butterflies cut out of the paper line. I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. And then I wasn't sure what else I was going to do to the cover. Um, in the end I do wind up putting a little key on the front. But I kind of stop here for now. And I'm going to just show you some of the uh, supplies that I use before doing a flip through. The paper line I used was this DCWV, uh, the Primrose stack, and it's a beautiful paper. I hadn't cut into it all that much, so it was fun to be able to put it into this mini album. But it is only a single-sided paper pad, so I did have to glue on some of the things. I had to glue papers back to back, and on others I just used the book pages that I pulled out of the book on the back of my um, items. So I use this sidekick die with the tab at the top. It's already got all the holes cut for me as well as the scalloped page, this kind of torn edge or deckled edge page. And then I use the tabbed page and I inserted it inside here. This is one of the larger dies and I just wanted that torn edge so I didn't use the holes on that, just the torn edge. I use this little envelope pocket and then this is just like one of their journal art journal specials that makes a pocket and tag and I wind up using this and altering it in a couple ways to uh, put into the book because it's got the beautiful floral cut work on there so those are the dies that I wound up using And there you can see I took a little bit of embroidery floss and I made another little bow that I tied a little silver key to and then I glued that onto my bow. So it just has that little touch of silver and another little item that kind of dangles freely there. There's one of the butterflies. You can't really see the stickles on the flowers, maybe a little bit, but it does have a slight shimmer to the flowers. So it looks really soft and pretty. And then like I said, um, on the inside I left the first few pages just as they were, but I did cover this front and back page just because there had been some writing or something, someone's name on there. And then here's the little envelope pocket. 
and I just took more of that embroidery floss there and tied another little silver key to it to make a little closure and then I put a little tag inside the envelope and that tag is a cut apart from the paper stack had some cut apart cards in it so I like that it just kind of brings that little key theme there's the scalloped page this page I just created on my own and I put some lace along the edge and it's just like a top loading pocket and I use some of the book pages on the back because like I said um, this paper is only single sided and I love this lace trim so I use that a few places throughout the the mini album there's the tabbed page I put a little bit of washi tape on the bottom as well in a few places there's some more washi up there this is the little torn or deckled edge and the paper is just gorgeous here I made a little tuck spot from one of the cut apart cards and I also use one of the cut up part cards to make a little tag and put some of that lace on top. Here's that art journal special. And it has, um, it's like a divided pocket. So you have a tag on the front portion of the pocket. And it just, the color kind of shows up through that cut work. And it's just gorgeous. And then there's a tag on the back side. and I just punched holes in it so it would fit. These are more cut apart cards. One I glued down to make a tuck spot. I put lace on top of that one card so they just slip in there. A little bit more lace on the edge and this is another top loading pocket that I created myself. It's like you could punch all the holes with a single hole punch. Um, you know, that's totally doable. It's just nice to have them all in the die already you know if you're gonna create quite a few of these albums for gifts and things so there's another pocket with a tag and um, another little key tied to the closure another scalloped page and then here's where I took the tabbed page and I kind of inserted it inside just to get this torn notebook edge and I cut the tab off the top so you can totally take these Elizabeth craft dies and you know really change them up and and use them as a base and they're just really versatile so I'm really enjoying using them and making these little binder albums and then like I said I left those pages alone I covered the end page and I just did another one of those art journal pockets and I took a cut apart card from the collection and put in there. So that is the finished binder. It went together really quick and easy and I just love the beautiful florals and kind of romantic feel of the whole album and that paper line. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or anything on this, um, just leave me a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.